playtime's over because tonight somebody's gonna get their ass whooped tonight it is Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome for January 9th, 2012. I'm your host, Kevin McElvaney, and with me, as always, is Young John. Young John, say hello to the loyal listeners. Hi, everybody. Okay, now that Dr. Nick has said hello, Young John, please say hello to the loyal listeners. Hello, loyal listeners. Welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome. Bowling Shoe Handsome, of course, being the 147th most popular bowling shoe monikered podcast on the entire internet and the number one bowling shoe monikered podcast at thebradyhicks.com. That's right. That's right. Sounds familiar. Oddly familiar. I can't place it. That, uh, that voice, that catchphrase. Now, well, let's continue onward. Uh, we have a lot to talk about tonight as always big week for professional wrestling in that there's a lot of nothing that we're talking about and by nothing, I mean, a lot of absence of uh, vocabulary and, uh, and verbiage. Of course, this I'm referring to last Monday's edition of Raw with the uh, anticlimactic return of Chris Jericho. So just, Young John, initial thoughts on this. You know, I'm going to do my best Jericho impression from Monday night. Okay. <sighs> Come on, baby! Yeah! Notice how that wasn't in the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know... At first, I just thought the crowd was just being just horrible, just like they were the whole entire night. I just thought they were just being totally dead. But then, you know, as everyone else saw, he kept almost talking into the mic. He kept playing with us. He kept hopping in, in and out of the ring and running around. Right. He, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know what to think of it. Some people said it was brilliant. Most people are frustrated. Yeah. I don't have an opinion on it. I mean, okay. I, I get what he did. I understand he's trying to seek attention by trying not to seek attention. So we're to assume he's a heel. And, you know, that, that technique seems to be aimed at the fans, you know, who would remember him, i.e. The, the older fans, i.e. You, you and me. Right. I mean, he hasn't been gone all that long, but certainly there are some new fans uh, who don't remember him so well from a couple of years ago who, who may not quite grasp his legacy and pro wrestling, but you have to look at this like this is something that was done, assumingly to get heat on Chris Jericho, right? To make to make him a heel right off the bat. After this big build up, he comes in, he says nothing. Ha ha ha! I get it. You know, it didn't do anything for me. And the reason tonight's episode is titled the way it is, the sound of one million remotes clicking, <laughs> is because I this is a trick you can do once and have it be effective. You cannot have Chris Jericho come out and be, do five minutes of silence. I would not be surprised if there were people who changed the channel during that segment, uh, a good amount of people. And if you try this more than once, I'll, t I'll tell you what, if he comes out next week and doesn't talk for about 30 seconds, I'm changing the channel. I'm not, I, it's not that I'm that busy, but I, I feel like I'm too damn old to sit there and watch somebody not talk for five minutes. Especially, you know what I mean? Yeah, especially like 11 or 5 p.m. on Monday night. Yeah, so it's it's just – I'm not interested in this Marcel Jericho game. You get that? Huh? Kind of. <laughs> All right. Well, apparently you're not a fan of mimes, but then again, neither am I in this context. Chris Jericho mm -hmm. comes back, says, well, no, not doesn't not say a word, but basically just yells, like you said, off mic <laughs> to the crowd. You know, it was meant to antagonize, but it was basically, if you heard with what it did to the, with the live crowd, they really only booed as he was leaving. It wasn't a it wasn't a resounding chorus of booze. More people seemed confused than anything else. Frustrated a whole lot of people watching it at home. And honestly, you can't do this every week. That that's just my that's my reaction to this. Now, uh, as we're recording this, Raw has not aired yet. Uh, while you're listening, you may have already watched Raw, or it may be on the air right now. So who knows where they're going with this? I mean, I just know that they can't use this trick more than once. I think it was a cheap thing. I and mean, do you think did you see this as being creative at all, John? You know, I, I'm trying to put my finger on if this is a Jericho thing or this is a WWE creative thing. And you know, I'm not sure. I don't want to cop out and say a little bit of both because 
Mm-hmm. I feel as though Jericho's been in the game long enough where he can, he can write his own stuff. Absolutely. And he does. To answer your question, it's it's creative. It's creative in the sense that nobody saw it coming. It's creative in the sense that Jericho – you associate Jericho with Loudmouth. Right. Yeah, you also – obviously technical wrestler as well. Right. But, you know, Loudmouth, he's good on the mic. Right. So and for the, him, for him not to use the mic, right, and still build a reaction, you know, it's 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 smart. And I, again, I, I get it. I, I understand why he did it to seek to 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 seek that heat. He's a heat seeker, Kevin. Yes, the greatest uh, DVD of all time. Just like your DVD, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to pick up more of those DVDs so you, so you can be quiet about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've referenced this before, but basically, Young John. Um, the, the, my old place, I didn't have a whole lot of wrestling DVDs or other <laughs> DVDs to watch. And, and for some reason, this uh, Heat Seekers WWE Roundtable DVD would always find its way into the DVD player. Uh, <laughs> it was, it's a pretty good show. I mean, it's a good show in general, but I mean, that was a pretty good episode. But just you need to watch more than one of that show to really appreciate it. More than one episode. Anyway, Chris Jericho. <laughs> okay, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho, yeah. So he returned, apparently. Now, now <laughs> you look at this and it's just... Yeah, it's the the antithesis of Chris Jericho. Uh, everything you knew before is now gone. The end is here. Blah 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 blah. Uh, I mean, I just yeah, okay. It, you proved your point, and I it, I'm soured on it. I get it. I'm supposed to be antagonized by what you did, but if I'm bored, dude, and I'm changing the channel, and and I'm a pretty patient person who leaves the TV on and sits through almost anything, then obviously some other people are going to do it too. So. I'm a, I might be eating my words next week. They might go somewhere brilliant next week. You know, he might turn on the crowd hard. He might do some something just fabulous. But as of right now, this is uh, I can't crap on the angle because I don't know where it's going. But I did not like that segment. Right now, I have two questions for you before we go to our first song. Okay. Now, number one, do you like what I did there? Yeah, I see that. That wasn't my first question. My <laughs> first question is, um, I lost my train of thought. We were doing so well. So you you don't see WWE playing this game of chicken again tonight? I mean, maybe for a, you know a minute or so. You can't drag it out this long. I, I look at this partly as them trying to get heat, heat for Chris Jericho, and partly as something. I, I I don't know. I think Chris Jericho tries to push his own boundaries and tries to. It's, this is I look at this as like some weird avant garde piece of pro wrestling that they're, that Chris Jericho wants to do here. Honestly, I think this is more him than WWE, but I, I, it's just not working for me so far. The real question is, can this work? Will it work long term? And uh, I actually have a question for you. But before we do that, because we are running along with this segment, let's go to a song. Okay. So this is from. The band that provides our weekly theme song, and that is Durham, North Carolina's Ascetic Parade. The song is called Promenade and Raindrops. So I'll try to understand Something I'll never understand 
Thanks to Ascetic Parade for that song. So, Young John, right off the bat, I have a question for you. Okay. What Jericho did, would this work? Uh, the goal with a heel in professional wrestling is ultimately that you want to see them get their ass kicked, right? That, that's basically it. You want to see them lose. Yes. So, aside from asking, did it work in WWE or will it work? You know, you said, can Chris Jericho come out and do this again? Will WWE try this again? Think of it this way. When they're building, when two guys are building up uh, a boxing match or an MMA fight, they have to do similar things. They the one guy has to be the the, the guy who's sort of cocky, or the, people get into roles and they have to make you want to see the fight. And a lot of times you have these guys, yeah, they'll play the play sort of the heel, and you're supposed to want to order the fight to see them get taken down. So would this work in boxing or MMA if somebody came out and just stood there? Would it work on a Would it work on a TV show? Like if there was a villain and he just stood there and st- stood around wasting time? Uh, TV, I uh, I don't think so. In MMA, no. In boxing, definitely no. Especially boxing. In boxing, right. yeah, it seems like the superstars, uh, superstars, the the, uh, the fighters, they have <laughs> they have an outgoing personality, whether it be positive, like Manny Pacquiao. You you don't see him speak that much, but if you really watch, you know videos and documentaries on Manny Pacquiao. He's extremely outgoing. Sure. And and there's also uh, boxers that aren't so positive, like Floyd Mayweather or Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. The bottom line, I mean, boxing is really going downhill ratings-wise because of MMA. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for somebody to pull a Jericho in boxing, that would not fly at all. Right. And MMA, yeah, I don't see it happening either, pretty much for the same reasons. Um, if you look at you, I mean, you have seen MMA at this point are synonymous right. and, um, it, I just don't see it happening in UFC either. Everyone is, everyone's outspoken in UFC. You barely see a shy fighter. Right. So and, to answer your question, I, I don't see his techniques flying in either boxing or MMA. Right. And the reason I ask this is again, because it, it's, I agree with you there. Totally, first of all. And the reason I brought this up to begin with is because obviously there are some differences between pro wrestling and boxing and MMA. There are also similarities. The whole or, or, the whole purpose behind pro wrestling initially was that it was supposed to be like these these legitimate fights, right? So I realized that the game has changed, but what Chris Jericho is doing is trying to turn the crowd on him in, in this sort of old-fashioned way. You know, you used to have these uh, these old-school heels used to scoot around the ring for like 10 minutes. They would keep sliding in and out, and out of the ring and not start the match, right? Right. It works really well with a live crowd. Like when you're in person and then you finally see that guy get, you know, his ass handed to him, mm-hmm. it works really well. But on TV, it's awkward. When they used to do this in these, you know, like Larry Zbysko is like the master of this. Larry Zbysko wasn't on a, a, a TV show with 20 segments. You know what I mean? The, he was doing this for a live crowd. And this arguably didn't even work with the live crowd. Now, granted, it's a different live crowd dynamic. That Memphis crowd is ver- that was there last they Monday were, night. They were brutal. And it's weird because, I mean, Memphis is such a great wrestling town. But that, that audience is very different from, from the Memphis wrestling that, you know, 
that Jerry the King Lawler and others made popular. Right. It kind of reminds me of if you ever watch. I hate to keep going back to the MMA, but mm-hmm. if you ever see like Japanese wrestling and like Japanese MMA, right. they just sit there and they're, they're content. They're just watching. There's right. not much crowd reaction unless something crazy happens. Right. But it kind of reminded me of just I guess because uh, Memphis is like the southern capital of wrestling besides Atlanta. Right. I guess they're they're the connoisseurs at this point, and they're just kind of like dissecting it. That, that's what I like to assume. Maybe. The, maybe. the reality is probably they're just a bunch of dumb hicks that don't know what's going on. And you just or, I mean, yeah. I'm just kidding. They're, they're a bunch of fans of Brady Hicks, is what you were trying to say? Did I save that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I guess where I was trying to go with this is ultimately you're trying to get people to want to see this guy be in a match, right? And if someone's boring... And somebody's irritating you. I mean, on one hand, there's a there's a level you can do it where it works perfectly. But if you take it too far and you make the product too boring, people are going to tune out. This is not the same as that old school wrestling crowd. You know, I saw a lot of old school wrestling personalities. You had Jim Ross, uh, JBL, a lot of other guys who who obviously like have a really that far better grasp on the business than I could ever hope to have. But I think they're looking at this and. I think they're underestimating how WWE is going to play the rest of this out. I, I don't see WWE handling this appropriately. I see them maybe trying to do it exactly the same way. And and if that sort of thing happens, and again, by the time you're listening to this, if they didn't, then I think they made the move. Because if you try and do this too much, people are going to change the channel. It's a different crowd than you used to have. On that topic, John, I, I look at all this these situations where WWE has done it. Um, WCW did it with uh, Vince Russo as an on-air character. Oh, Christ. You, you, you put these people on the air who are awkward to watch, really awkward and painful to watch. But at the same time, you don't want to see them in a match. You know, I'm talking about John Laurinaitis in the current situation. I'm talking about um, the old greatest general manager in the history of Raw, Mike Adamley. I'm not <laughs> talking about, about the lovably awkward Jack Tunney. I'm talking about people. Ah, uh, Jack Tunney. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just talking about these guys who come on, and I think the whole point is to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's a great way to get heel heat. But if something gets too awkward, I have uh, I don't know. I have the urge to shut it off sometimes. And it's like, okay, you know what? This is just painful to watch. There's a difference between good awkward and bad awkward. There's a difference between disdain and, okay, I've completely lost interest in this now because this, is, this person is awful. Just like this show? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm sure plenty of people <laughs> tuned out by now, and that's you know, and that would be our fault. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah. Well, she can't hear you now. But I don't know. I don't know, John. What do you, do you think? There's a way to do this. You know, you have Johnny Ace, and he's painfully awkward. And I've talked to a couple of people who are of the impression that yeah, everything he does is on purpose, and and as far as being terrible, it's to make people hate him more. But really, I mean. <sighs> It would be it would be one thing if he was getting his ass beat on a regular basis by basis by uh, Punk for for example right right um, because he could be a regular foil I mean for him to be on every week for a little bit of payoff for him to get like one GTS three months from now is that really is that really worth it uh no but here's the thing with uh, WWE's creative team if they see that somebody if they see that a majority of the crowd likes something. Mm-hmm. They will shove it down your throat for months and months and months. Right. I feel like they always bring back the old guys, whether it was um, Cowboy Bob Orton, you know, when Randy was coming up. Right. Bob Orton was on TV for like half a year. Yeah, it was you know, they, Remember Chavo Classic? He was there for way longer than he should have been there. Right. And, you know, Johnny Ace, he, he's a tad awkward. <laughs> and. <laughs> but, yeah. But he got a little bit of a reaction, and they want to exploit that. I, exactly. It reminds I mean, me of how the Stooges were forced down our throats. Right. Right, I mean, right, right, right. Really good comparison. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, what I'm assuming is I'm assuming they're trying to find a new Mr. McMahon. And I know that sounds blasphemous, but I just yeah. feel like they're trying to find an authority figure that is just – once they're on camera, you're just immediate reaction. I think you're totally right about that. I mean, I, I think that's what they've been going for with Michael Cole. And despite them having him play heel for literally the entire two hours for the past year and a half, it hasn't worked. He's not McMahon. He, he, he's been trying to get himself over for a year and a half. And I mean, maybe it's not his idea at all, but it hasn't worked. Michael Cole is not Mr. McMahon. That's it, true. Him, him getting the crap kicked out of him does not get the reactions that it should for the amount of time that they spend building up his heel character. And I think we're going to see the same thing with Johnny Ace. Yeah. You know what? Now that you were saying that, maybe they're trying to make Michael Cole into like a Bobby Heenan or, 
you know, a, a Jerry Lawler, just a heel announcer that you just want to see get the crap beat out of him. I think Cole would be a decent manager, honestly. I just don't want to hear him doing play-by-play in a way that is designed to get him over for two hours. That That's that's obnoxious to me. It makes me tune out the commentary altogether. Right. You know, I, I think that's a big waste of time, and I think it detracts from the matches that are going on. But I just look at all this, and I guess just to bring this back to Jericho, you have – this stuff they're doing with John Laurinaitis now, you have this thing with uh, Jericho where they're they're trying to play off the awkwardness of that situation. But you have to look at how much this turns people off and makes them tune out. You don't want this dead air sitting on there. You know, you don't want people to change the channel because they're not patient enough to wait for this payoff. This is not the same audience uh, that that would have eaten up Larry Zbysko, you know, crawling in and out of the ring. 20 years ago. I know people insist that human nature hasn't changed at all and that maybe that's so, but you know, taste for entertainment certainly has and WWE's fan base is not the wrestling fan base of old and I don't think you can just so suddenly educate them to behave in the way that that old fan base did after years of pulling them away from that. Two words, immediate gratification. Right. That's what our society is at right now right. and that's not what we're that's not what we're, what we're receiving from this right. product. And I admit, like, with me getting frustrated with this, part of that, I mean, it's they did exactly the right thing. I mean, they definitely got a short-term reaction from me. But if they go – and this is where I was I, about to head with it also, John. You were saying about how WWE sees something works. This got a reaction. They don't like subtlety. WWE and subtlety are like oil and water or, or think of something that's a thousand times less compatible than oil and water. And you get WWE and subtlety's relationship described. Uh, WWE. Oh, I have not, one. WWE, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Akbaz and in the room. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just kidding. Hey, at least I didn't say Ak- Admiral you're, Akbaz. You're, you're, as Al Franken would say, you're you're kidding on the square. There, there's a joke with a, with a large grain of truth to it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... I don't know, man. It's just you see this and I don't see them doing this once because WWE doesn't like to just do something once. They want you to re- remember everything that they do for about four weeks and then they're done you know, mentioning it after that. But they will throw stuff, shove stuff down your throat. And I mean they're certainly going to be referencing this in video packages and it's going to be a lot more palatable in video packages. But if he comes out there and there's two minutes of dead air, man, that's I don't I don't see this working long term. And probably said enough about this. You want to go to another song? Let's go to another song. All right. The next song is by now, uh, I guess, on indefinite hiatus, Philadelphia artist, Red and Orange. And the song is from the from the EP, Your Hands, My Inferno. And this song is called Behind the Drums. Kisses on your neck lightly Behind the drums, behind the curtain Your skin pressed thumbs We have some time before the show starts at night
put it more down to the stage being low lust appears like no devil can touch your soul David laid on his hotel bed on channel 4 advertisement adjustments closing down eyelids when the dreams kicked in it looked like a hotel room when you over the bed there was no floor underneath Mary can you hear me? You won't marry the sunshine It doesn't matter the sunshine I won't marry your sunshine I won't marry today I won't marry your sunshine It doesn't matter your sunshine I won't marry your sunshine I won't marry today I won't marry your sunshine It doesn't matter your sunshine I won't marry your sunshine I won't marry today I won't marry your sunshine I won't marry your sunshine I won't marry your sunshine Okay, Behind the Drums by Red and Orange, and we are back. Bold and Chew Handsome, we're generally talking about how much awkward is too 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 much awkward. How much, uh, how much, well, pretty much that awkward. Yeah, you just kind of explained <laughs> it right there, Kevin. Yeah, I, I did. I sort of just uh, manifested <laughs> what, what we were talking about. But, yeah, how much of this awkward crowd heat is too much and and at what point does it become off-putting what point does it make the remotes click and the channels change you know i think wwe uh because it lacks this system for getting the crowds to react organically to things has to rely on certain things i was i was of the impression for a while john that they were having wrestlers drag out their promos like th that sounds that's pretty much what heel randy orton has done his entire time talk very slowly last man use, standing <laughs> use awkward words like skull that sound strange i don't like hearing someone say skull in that drawn out tone and that just these little like audio <sighs> these little audio cues that are supposed to mess with you and, and the, the, this way of just making fans uncomfortable to the point where they hate people. And I mean, to some extent, wrestling is always drawn off of that, whether it was xenophobic tendencies or homophobic tendencies or whatever it might have been. Wrestling has played off of people's fears and discomforts for a long time. So in, in a way that this, this is nothing new, but in, in another way entirely, I think it just makes the programs less watchable. It makes everything... Um, the Randy Orton promos that I mentioned, and I, I don't think he's been doing this as much because he's, you know, a good guy now. <laughs> but I think in some ways it just makes his segments a lot more bland, and I, I tune them out. I may not change the channel necessarily because I feel like uh, once the the physical part of his segments start, it's good. So, and his, so I mean, that might be Jericho's saving grace here. But I, I think if you take these things to their logical conclusion, you take them too far – you make the product a lot less watchable. Basically, the way uh, when we were planning for this, John, you described this as WWE sort of trolling its audience. So they be trolling. Yeah. So explain for anyone who doesn't know what trolling is, John. Trolling is exactly what Chris Jericho did. It's just something that is the complete opposite of a social norm. Right. Like Jericho coming out and like I was saying before, he he's known for his mic skills comes out and doesn't say it we're on the mic right you got trolled right so that that is exactly what happened and i mean generally speaking um trolling has made the internet a lot less pleasant it's harder to go on uh, forums including those <laughs> at com because of trolls you know it's it just <laughs> just trying to get out of people's 
baser emotions. And I mean, in a way, that's all, again, always what wrestling's done. So there is a fine line here. There's a way to do this and make people want to keep coming back. But there's a point where the troll goes too far. You don't want to feed it anymore, sort of. Yes. You don't want to give the troll any more rolls. And then uh, you end up, you stop feeding it. You know, you stop coming back. You know what? Uh, I liked arguing with that person for a while, but I'm, you know, got tiresome. Or I, I liked Chris Jericho's stick. I mean, it, it pissed me off, but I just wanted to see where it went. And then eventually I got too tired of it. I liked watching Johnny Ace because I really, really hoped that he was going to get the go to sleep or he was going to get the AA. And it just didn't happen. And I got tired of waiting for it. And I mean, again, it comes back to that immediate gratification thing, but it's like you have to deliver sometimes. And in the situation, the setup that they have now at WWE and society in general, you have to deliver a little bit more often to keep people's attention for better or worse. Yeah. Well, maybe they think that they deliver it by making all of the fan favorites the champs. Because I mean, right now, all right. of the fan favorites are champs. They are, yeah. For every the most single part. every single belt is held by a fan favorite, like a big time fan favorite. Uh, the Divas title isn't, but uh, and Cody isn't a fan favorite, but he's definitely popular. Uh, right, I, I, yeah, I guess. But I the, yeah, the main, that. yeah, but no, but many of them. Well deserved, according to the um, what's the term floating around now? IWC. Yeah, the IWC. The I IW, floating around from around the IWC. Right. Um, so, but yeah, I, I, I'm assuming that they, they think that they can keep drawing out their own creative ideas right because they they please the fans for now they suppease the fans yeah i i just you know i mean i don't i i hear myself saying all this and on one level i'm, I'm just like you know this could be it, it probably should be a situation where they can do these long-term angles i mean you'll hear us at other times complaining that things aren't spread out long enough but i think the thing is that you have these situations where the same few tricks get relied on over and over and over again, kicked right in the skull <laughs> and <laughs> hook the arm, <laughs> hook the arm, jump at the same time. Uh, I get what you're saying. Uh, very subtle. La 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 to sort of drag things out a little bit and not rely on the same few tricks and not make the programming so tedious. And I, I think this Jericho storyline might end up being great. I have hopes that it is. And the reason I'm dwelling on it so much is really because I'm such a big Jericho fan. But I think what he does here is really important. I don't want to see him hastily thrown into some feud with anybody. I, honestly, I, we don't really have time to get into it this show, but I don't even think I want to see him versus Punk at all. Um, but, so I think whatever he does is going to have to have a whole carry a whole lot of weight to it to justify him coming back and injecting himself into a significant part of WWE's programming. And I think WWE in general needs to use its time more wisely because, you know, the ratings have not gone up over the past few years. Right. And I, it, they'll continue to lose viewers. Yeah, you were just bringing that up. It seems like CM Punk has so much on his plate. Do you right. think because of this he's going to drop to to Ziggler at Royal Rumble? Just so Punk can deal with all these other feuds. He has Johnny Ace. He has um, Jericho. I guess that's just two. But two is a lot. Of, I guess he has three because Dolph Ziggler. Right. And Dolph Ziggler has is, 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 has been his current opponent. Do that's you think not... that he's you think he's going to drop at Royal Rumble so he can deal with this stuff? Meanwhile, that creates more for Ziggler. That's not a terrible idea, honestly, because I don't think you want I, – I think you need to have the guys be significant and be a big part of the programming. I, I don't know as far as whether or not Ziggler's the right guy right now. I mean I guess we'll see. But right. yeah, that's not a bad thought. I think it, it wouldn't hurt to spread things out a little bit you know, rather than right. have Punk – yeah, like you said, he has a lot on his plate. He, he's doing – he's trying to accomplish a lot of things at the same time. So is – it's spread out over just a couple of sets of shoulders because you look at Cena, he's th the stuff with Kane and still building towards a match with The Rock and still occasionally in the, in the WWE title scene. Right, because as of right now, Cena does not need the title. Right. If you think about it, you know, everyone's like the title is this illustrious belt. The title is just, you know, a piece of a piece, a piece of leather to, to get someone over. Listen to you, Vince Russo. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I gave it to David Arquette. Yeah. Gomez. Okay. Okay. Gomez. <laughs> Beautiful. 
I like parroting you. It's fun. I'm Vince uh, Russo. <laughs> that's that's, a, that's you need to end every single parody. That's two thousand. That's a 2012 Slammy winner right there. You're Vince Russo. Keep working on that. Okay. All right. Let's go to a song running a little bit long here, and I think we had uh, one more topic, and we we're going to wrap up. So uh, thanks for, for indulging us here and letting us vent the good friends slash listeners that you are. We'll be right back to wrap things up. But first, uh, this is actually an unreleased song from Third Year Freshman, who you heard a couple of tracks from last week, Westchester, Pennsylvania's own Third Year Freshman, with an unreleased demo track called Philly's Blunt. One day when I was 15, I went to the 7 Eleven. Feeling silly, doing stunts. That's when I decided to smoke. in the dumpster listening to the chronic and I'm like hey man hey man and that's when evil E and Chino came up and they're like yo bull I'm like yo bull I'm like, you got the you got the blood we're like feeling silly doing my stuff that's why back third year freshman with philly's blunt so uh young john you had another topic uh being the cook that you are on this show cooking up our topics cooking up topics you uh that doesn't really fit kevin i wanted to get in that you're a cook speaking of inside jokes which we were about 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 six months ago yeah inside jokes are mean (laughs) so jim ross commentated an nba game Mm -hmm. uh, this past week or last week i should say I did hear about this. For the Oklahoma City Thunder. He didn't, you know, comment. He just stepped in, I believe, for a quarter. Right. And I didn't hear any of it. I know there's videos out there. Um, but the, the reason why I'm bringing this up, not just because it's JR, but... Right. Did you see his his new look? I'm just looking at this now. Uh, this this link that you sent to me. and Oh, man. Evil JR. Yeah, and that goatee, I can't tell if it's it's white or, or if it's, like, blondish, which is a little bit awkward. The answer to your question is yes. <laughs> the answer to your question is 37. <laughs> so, J- JR... 27! He's wearing all black. He's wearing a black, you know, 10-gallon hat. But yeah. he has, like, a white... Like, a almost, Billy, Billy Graham. He has, like, a Billy Graham... It's almost a Fu Manchu. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a Fu Manchu. It looks like, kind of like a Billy Graham, but... Not as long and not as steroid filled. <laughs> Are we talking about the uh, beard or? I'm talking about his beard. sweet, sweet Jeffy. <laughs> oh my, my oh my ass. God. Remember that video they made? Uh, someone made a JR like. Oh, yeah. 
That oh my god, we have to post that. <laughs> yeah, we do. You know what? You know what's great about that too. So supposedly Jr. No, actually not supposedly. He he said it. Jr. was was a fan of that. Him apparently he and his friends would watch it and th- they thought it was funny. Nice. I, I, I'm just picturing Jr. and his friends crowded around the YouTube's. <laughs> Come oh wait, let, let me sweet let, video. Oh my god, I'm gonna break out the external speakers. <laughs> The video we're talking about is JR. Somebody took a lot of time to compile a bunch of different audio bits of JR and just make them sound really weird. It's him rapping. Right. And, and I believe um, one of the main lines was 30 men will enter my ass. <laughs> and I, th- I believe this song was entitled My Ass. My Ass. And then there was My Ass too. And uh, and actually, the the beat that he's rapping over is not too different from the the beat that he actually rapped over on Raw a month or so ago. And I, I assume that was on purpose. Nice. That, that because the my ass video predated that segment by several years. And it's actually, if you want to hear Jr. rap well, you know, go check those those out on the YouTube's. Crowd that around sounds, with your friends. That sounds like a like an '80s rap star. <laughs> Jr. rap well. <laughs> Or a character on a ter- terrible, terrible Dallas ripoff. <laughs> it's it's yeah. for the it's for the urban demographic. Jr. Yes. Rap well. Exactly. All right. Well, do you have a uh, background this week? I have a background of the week. It's been up for a while. I I took down. I forget who we had last week. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, I think it was. Mrs. Doubtfire, yes. Mrs. Mrs. Doubt. Uh, fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. Never mind. I prefer but, Mrs. Pennyfeather myself. <laughs> the background of the week is Alice Eve. She was in the movie She's Out of My League. Uh, she's on a Maxim cover, and the picture that is going to be the background. Oh my goodness! Have you seen it, Kevin? I'm looking at it right now. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> All right, well that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> so you're gonna put the link to that up. Everyone can enjoy enjoy yes. that. Yeah. And uh, big shout out to Chauncey the Gaudy Ventura. Oh yeah! Wow, that was something. How about that? How funny was that? Well, I think uh, I think that was that was a lot of fun, and I think it's really cool that he came on. I think he lifted Mike's spirits a little bit. And yeah, I'm, I'm 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 sad that Mike's sad. Yeah. I, and it, he seems kind of silent in the room last week as well. Well, you know what? Maybe he was secretly pulling pretty hard for that, that guest hosting spot. I mean, supposedly there's some issues with uh, his ratings. So, I mean, anybody who's listening here, get over there. Support Matt Minutia. Um, really good show last week. I'm sure it's just going to you know, keep being on the up after that. Yeah, um, Chauncey, especially if Chauncey. Oh, my God. He was great. Ridiculous. And I like the the Nibiru uh, reference. What was that? Nibiru. Oh no! It's yeah. it's it's a renegade planet. You you wouldn't know about it. <laughs> you're you're not part of Mensa like okay, me and okay, Mike. Okay, okay, hipster, intellectual hipster. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anything else to add? No, no. I hope everyone enjoys Raw this week. I hope everybody enjoyed TNA Genesis last night. <laughs> we can speak nothing on that because we're recording prior to it. Let's let's make <laughs> predictions on an event that happened last night, Kevin. <laughs> yes, that sounds like a great idea. I'll just say RVD wins all the matches, which turned out to be true. I yeah. just I had just interjected with a with and said that it was all true, John. You didn't hear it. I I edited it in later. You know, Wait, I think that doesn't make any sure. sense. <laughs> I know I know we're running long, but I think we should make our picture this week. Uh, the picture of Poochie going back to his home planet. Oh yeah. Remember, this is a Simpsons reference. Reference when Itchy and Scratchy included Poochie, and Poochie bombed so bad that they just killed him off. They said Poochie, Poochie died and went back to his own planet. And I texted Kevin that when Chris Jericho was all done being awkward. Right. Well, we'll see. I mean, I I thought that was atrocious when it aired. We will hopefully be putting our foots, our foots, because we like to use incorrect plurals here. Bowling shoe handsome, the the home of the incorrect plural. Um, <laughs> hopefully we'll be putting our foots in our mouths next week. 
Uh, I want to see Chris Jericho prove me wrong. So Chris Jericho, um, if you're hearing this, which you're not because you're on Monday Night Raw right now, <laughs> prove me wrong. Prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. And, and we will formally apologize next week to Chris Jericho. If that That's happens. right. All right. Well, thanks once again, everybody, for tuning in. And join us again here at thebradyhicks.com next week for more Bowling Shoe Handsome. So don't ask me how I am. Don't ask me how.